Hey everyone, it's Sunday the 21st of August and it's 10.35 in the evening. Now in this video I've got a couple of new toys that I want to show you and uh, talk about. This one on the screen here is one of those. The other one is just off screen here. Um, I want to just uh, update you on the eye and uh, just a few other things that I want to chat about as well. Um, so I'm going to start with the eye. So yesterday, which was Saturday the 20th of August, um, marked one month, believe it or not, since I had that mini stroke in my right eye. Um, now I can actually see relatively clearly. It's not 100%. I would say it's probably 95%, maybe a little bit more. Um, uh, it has slowed down at the rate I notice improvements. It's every sort of two or three days. Um, but it is still improving, although those improvements are small. So, so I think eventually it's uh, it will stop. I don't think I'll ever get, you know, 100% back to normal, which is fine. Um, I've got good enough sight back to pretty much, you know, everything is normal. <laughs> you know, I can go back to playing around with Lego and fixing things and riding the moped. It's good enough for that. So, yeah, all's good. Um, just got to hope, you know, fingers crossed that it doesn't happen again anywhere in the body, not just the eye. Um, but then, you know, that's why I'm on the... Uh, oh, it's an empty box. On the uh, blood thinners for life. Yay! Although I was thinking I had it bad at 38 with the amount of pills I have to take a day, but I did see a video on Facebook earlier today where someone's on sort of three times, 30 odd pills a day he's got to take. I thought, wow, that's uh, that's worse than me, actually. <clears throat> right, anyway. Uh, next subject. Shall we talk about the uh, trike that's up on screen here? So, first, I'm just going to zoom you in. Just get it right there we go so I bought this thing about a week and a half ago um, saw it on Facebook marketplace uh, I had to commandeer mum in the car to go and get it because it was uh, in um, Alsham which is about three miles from where she lives and about ten from where I live so what I did, I went over to hers for the day. She came and picked me up and then we went from hers to Alsham to go and collect this and back to hers and I had dinner and whatnot. Spent the day at Mum's. Anyway, um, it's a Mission tricycle. Um, it's had three new tyres fitted and three new inner tubes by the previous owner. I didn't, that was the previous owner. Um, and they're Schwalbe branded tyres. I don't know if the tubes are. I believe they are. Um, so that alone, you're looking at a good sort of 60 or more quid just in tyres on this. Um, to get it in the car, I had to take the seat off, drop the handlebars down and take the front wheel out. And that actually rolled in quite nicely into the back of Mum's Jeep Compass. Uh, yeah. And it's fully working. I haven't had to do anything to it apart from, you know, set it up for my own preferences, basically, and my own comfort. You know, adjust the seat height, which I had to do anyway, because um, I had to take it out of the bike. Uh, although, if even if I hadn't t taken it out, I would have still had to adjust it because it was too tall. The previous owner was a lot taller than me. Um, and he'd also had a stroke, actually. He had a like a brace around his right shin and um, he was telling me he had to strap his right foot to the pedal and I'd also noticed that the um, brakes had been switched around so in the UK your left hand brake is usually the rear brake and your right one is the front brake well they'd been switched so the left one was the front brake 
And I think the reason he did that um, was because the front brake's a lot better than the rear. The rear one's not, you know, abysmal, but it isn't brilliant. I will um, look into it. Looks like it's got enough pad on it. Because it's a really weird brake on these. They're um, like a round drum, if you like, disc. And it pulls on like a big pad on some like um, springy metals. That's really hard to describe. I'll have to uh, take a camera down there at some point and um, show you it. Um, but yeah, anyway, the pad on it looks fine. I think because it's just open to the elements and quite close to the chain and everything, it's just full of crud and crap. So I probably just want a good old clean out in there. Um, yes, I'm guessing, obviously, I'm guessing his right side was the weaker side, so he switched everything over to the left because the gear shifter was on the left as well. So I switched everything back so the right brake lever now operates the front brake. And I put the gear shifter back on the left, and that's pretty much it, apart from adding some lights. And uh, I picked uh, Dynamo lights that match the rear mudguard. So I changed these reflectors to mudguard taillights. That are usually ran by a bicycle dynamo. I've actually got them uh, connected to one of these 6 volt lantern batteries at the minute. Because um, I didn't want to mess around putting a dynamo on it, and I just wanted something easy, you know, that I could uh, switch on from a single switch which is fitted to the handlebar <coughs> using a very complicated but trustworthy method zip ties. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to buy the taillights um, on eBay because I didn't have two that matched, and I didn't want to put odd ones on. Um, one modification I had to do, I had to take a short piece of wire to go from the mudguards to the main frame of the trike just to act as a ground because the mudguards, where they fit to the frame, it's insulated by paint so they wouldn't work. So obviously I'm using the frame as the ground and uh, the switch is literally just going between the um, negative on the battery and the bike frame, simple as that. In fact, for the switch ground, I've actually grounded it down here where the um, front lamp is. I just took the fixing that off and uh, put an eyelet crimp on the wire and just bolted it back on. Simple. Um, although with three lights on there, they're not very bright. I might try some of them screwing LED bulbs you can get. The little MES ones. I can get them for ordinary torches and things. I did buy some, but they're not actually that good. At least the ones I bought weren't. And they're not that cheap either, to be honest, for a little torch-sized bulb. Uh, although I don't think the battery's that good. And what I might do, I might either try and um, put two of these in parallel, which would make the lights brighter, or I've got a lead-acid rechargeable one I could use. Make sure that's fully charged and see if that actually has a bit more oomph in it. Because that's the problem, there's just not enough oomph in the battery to run all three bulbs. I might see at some point if I can actually find an LED just to see if they're uh, going to work any better. Might as well experiment. <laughs> so uh, you're probably wondering how much I paid for this. I will say it's the most expensive pedal powered thing I've actually ever bought in my life. <laughs> um, and why I actually bought this. So let me just zoom out and I can bring myself back into view. Well, it cost me £220. I've never even spent that much money on a bicycle. In fact, I've never bought a brand new bicycle. They've all been second hand. I think the most I've ever spent on a bicycle, second hand, is 75 quid. That is the most. And that was on a vintage rally, actually, which... No, I haven't got that one. I sold that one. I got the other one, which I think I paid about 60... 65, 70 quid for. I can't remember now. Anyway. 
But like I said earlier, you know, it's got three brand new Schwab tyres and tubes on, which are not cheap brand. I um, was looking for new tyres, I think, for the um, Apollo Racer. I wonder what a tyres for that one. And I found Schwab and they were 20 quid for a tyre for that. So even for this, you're probably looking about 15, 20 quid a tyre each for that. And the tubes, so you're probably looking at a good at least 50 quid just in tyres and tubes at the very least. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, 220 quid is about the average price for something like this. You might get lucky and find them a bit cheaper, like for I did see one for 150 quid, but that's further away. Um, and needed a bit more work done to it. But 220 quid for a fully working, fully operational tricycle is actually a good price. Considering, you know, they're not cheap brand new either. It's got a big old basket on the back as well. Um, and it's so much fun to actually ride it. It's only got six gears. It's got no gears at the front. It's only got the rear ones. But, uh, yeah, and that big old beefy seat on it is extremely comfortable as well. Um, it does take some getting used to to ride it. Uh, for one, only one rear wheel is actually driven, um, which doesn't actually make it as awkward as I thought it would, to be honest. What I'm not used to is the way it sort of wobbles around. You know, I've dropped off um, the pavement off a, a raised curb, one back wheel at a time, and I actually got scared because I thought the whole thing was going to tip over. Because I'm used to riding a bicycle, aren't I? I'm not used to something like that um, which it probably shows when I'm riding it because I keep putting my left foot down on the floor and I don't need to on a trike do I because <laughs> it stays up right by itself <laughs> but uh, yeah I really do like it so there's two reasons why I bought it one I've always wanted something like this um, I don't know why I've always liked the look of them I've always just generally liked them and always wanted one and my hybrid which has got all the pannier bags on and baggage rack on that I usually use to go to the shops and get my groceries with needs a lot of work um, not, well really to do the work on it I need to you know take it off the road bring it up here or whatever and it needs pretty much a complete strip down and rebuild because there's so much that is broken on it in fact, what it's going to cost me to fix that up, you could argue I might as well go and buy another bike, another second-hand hybrid bike. But I really do like this one. I like the frame style. I like the, um, the ride, the feel of it, how it rides. You know, I like the riding position on it. So I don't really want to get another one. And the frame's perfectly fine. In fact, the cables are fine. It's pretty much everything else that is shot. <laughs> it was a second-hand bike when I bought it. And really, the only thing I've ever changed on it are the cables when they've gone. And that's only once in about the four years or so that I've owned it. Oh, and a set of tyres. That was the only other thing I've put on. A couple of years, two, three years ago, I put a set of tyres on. And they're still good tyres. Um, oh, and a set of brake blocks twice because I thought the ones I put on were crap and were wearing out but no difference so it's actually the wheel rims the edge of the rims that are wearing out so I need a set of wheels it needs either the jockey wheels or a rear derailleur mech because the jockey wheels are worn out the chains worn out because there's a lot of slop in it um, I haven't actually checked the free wheel on the back wheel so I don't know if the teeth are worn on that but I'm going to change it anyway because let the, uh, I think that was a bike. Yeah, bike. Let him go past. It. Yeah. Um, but that's probably worn as well because the chain's worn. And because I only use third gear at the front, I barely ever sh um, shift the gears at the front. It's worn third gear out. The teeth are getting rather um, pointy. <laughs> and I have had the chain go crunch, as I call it. You know, when you try to push away. <laughs> And the chain just goes crunch and you go ow because you usually slip and crack your nuts on the seat or the crossbar or something 
yeah I've had it do that a few times so the whole drivetrain basically needs replacing um, and I think I've estimated that's about 60 quid alone just for that that's without the wheels and I can't find you know a cheap set of 700 um, C or well, like 27 inch wheels I think actually uh, alloy ones um, to go on it not cheap ones I can't find them <laughs> and they're gonna be like well the best I've found so far even looking on eBay is actually they're more than 60 quid for a pair uh, it needs gear shifters because the left one's actually broken not that that's a big thing I could actually I could just leave those because they're not that important it's just knowing that that left one doesn't work properly um, bugs me but that's something I can do another day um, and the V-brakes I need a new set of V-brakes on because um, springs are shot so instead of the V-brakes if you've got your brakes either side of your wheel like that your V-brakes and you've got the cable at the top here the fingers would be the top of the V-brakes and they go like that only one does it on both brakes because the spring has gone on one side <laughs> And I've tried the adjusting springs to adjust the spring tension and all sorts. Cannot get them adjusted right. So I figured a new set of those as well. So yeah, those are the two reasons why I bought this new toy. Do I ever want to get rid of it? Probably not. Not unless I get really, really bored. But I like it so much, the chances of that would be quite slim. I mean, I really am enjoying this pool. I've only pooled it around sort of just outside here on the road just to get used to the feel of it I have gone a little bit further I'm getting further away from home with it um, I just want to build up a bit more confidence and experience on it until I sort of head out into traffic if you like uh, yeah so I think I need to spin the camera around now and I'll show you the other one which is also a bicycle well that's a tricycle technically still pedal piled though so let me just uh, pan you around don't know if I can get that in yeah there we go I picked this up today um, I want to come back a bit more there's that last better ish I think in the lounge is about as good as I'm gonna get sorry about that so yeah I'll pick this up today 35 pounds for a more modern fold-up bike. Um, quick release seat. I haven't got the quick release handlebar stem, so that doesn't really fold up like the older ones used to, like my um, Viceroy one in the shed. Or the one that I've got over at Mum's, and I can't remember what that one's called. <laughs> it's basically exactly the same as my blue Viceroy that I picked up um, a month or so ago. Um, so it's got a different name and different colour on it. Yeah, this is a Challenge branded one, which is a cheap Argos brand, basically. Not really a bad bike, but nothing really to sort of shout home about, if you like. It's just a basic bike. Um, but the only thing I've actually done to this, other than fit the dynamo lights to it, so I found a use for those um, dynamo lights that I bought on the marketplace. Got one set mounted on this. Although the dynamo itself is shit because it doesn't rub on the wheel very well. Um, but I have a method to rectify that if I can get the um, rubber cap things that Roy's used to sell to go on your dynamo. I used to have like, used to be able to get like a rubber cap that goes on top of your dynamo bottle and that's supposed to um, be less wear on the tyre and give a bit more grip. Um, I did have a couple somewhere, but I have no idea where the hell they went. I've not seen them in well over a year. So, <laughs> hopefully I could go and get another pair of those tomorrow and just pop one on there. Um, other than that, the only thing I've done is go out and buy a brand new inner tube for the back tyre and fix the flat tyre. That's it. That's the only repair it needed. I've not done anything to the brakes. I've not done anything with the gears. Um, oh, and I lowered the seat as well. I did clean up the handlebars and whatnot a bit because they were a lot rustier than what they are now. Um, 
I've actually got my rotary tool somewhere in here that I used uh, with a little wire brush in it. I haven't even taken it for a ride yet. It's sort of getting a bit too late for me. And, well, that I couldn't be bothered to take it downstairs. I'll do that tomorrow. I have to say though, when he's like, like those, bah, <laughs> my tongue got a complete twist there. When those dynamo lights do work properly, they are actually pretty bright, even at a low speed. I'm quite impressed at that. You don't have to pedal like hell to get any brightness out of the lights, which is good. Um, I will fit a set of battery lights on it as well. There was a baggage rack on it, but I took it off because it was rusty as heck. Uh, I'm not really sure where I threw that. Well, I'll probably get rid of that one altogether. If I ever want to put one on, I'll find another one to put on. Actually, I've got one over at Mum's. I've got, I think I've got one or two here that I could put on it if I want to. But probably not. I just bought this for a bit of fun. And like I said, I just wanted one with them, um, which is a bit more modern. Um, this has actually got six gears on it, so it's not like the old three speeds. It's got three extra gears. <laughs> I've got a proper little dray you make on it. It's got kickstand on it as well. Uh, I might actually have to put the seat up a little bit, but I can adjust that all tomorrow. It'd be nice if the handlebars raised a little bit more as well. Anywho, I've always had a soft spot for folding bikes as well, so I don't know why. Or the shopper bikes, as we used to call them. <clears throat> yeah, good tires. And the um, chap was kind enough to drop it off for me. He was only in a little village called Trunch, which is about a mile out of town. A mile, mile and a half, something like that. It's not that far. He said he comes into town anyway, so he didn't mind dropping it off for me. So for that, I actually gave full price. I didn't haggle. I didn't think that was fair. So, oh, I've got three spiders as well. One of which is on the wall above my PC monitor. <laughs> I'm not joking either. I don't know if you're going to see it. Hang on. Where's my zoom button? It's up there some. There it is, just above the fox. It's been sitting there all night. He hasn't moved. He nearly fell off the wall. Oh, sorry. Got the charge caught on the camera. There. He nearly fell off the wall when he was walking up there, and that's just where he sat ever since. Watching me. Probably planning to get me when I go to bed. <laughs> the chances of getting a bite from something like that are actually pretty slim. Right, what's next? Um, oh yeah, early this evening I had a pleasant surprise. I had my half-sister, along with her three kids, um, give a surprise visit. Um, yeah, my two nieces and nephew. I haven't seen them for quite a few years, so that's quite a surprise. <laughs> to see how much they grow. In fact, I believe the last time I saw the youngest niece and nephew, they were actually babies. And now they're walking around, you know, talking. Yeah, I can't believe how quick time has flown. Um, if I had a better mode of transport, I'd actually go out and see them, but they're quite a distance away from me. They're 45 minutes in a car. I could use the moped, but that would take me probably over an hour on that thing <clears throat> to get out there. Um, but yeah, many years ago, one of my friends was uh, dating my half sister, and he fathered two of them. Um, so they'd been there. Uh, he'd had the kids there, and they'd take them out to Great Yarmouth, actually, up on the pleasure beach. And they stopped off to come and see me, which was really nice. In fact, my nephew gave me this that he got out of the arcade. Isn't it? Special little tiger now. 
That was a nice little. I'm going to have to give him something now because I feel bad. <clears throat> I'm going to have to find something I can give him. He seems to like the Lego. So I might have to see if I can find some Lego to give him. There and my phone is doing something all on its own. I did not even touch it. Don't know if you heard that little beep. But yeah, we're doo doo. Right. Well, yesterday was fun and games. Um, I had to be up early yesterday morning because I was going over to help my stepdad. So I'd gone to bed early, gone to bed by 11 o'clock Friday night. And I woke up at about 1.30. Might have been a bit later than that. Because um, the fan had gone off. I'd, there was a power cut. And I cannot sleep without a bloody fan. I've tried. The daft thing is, though, I can fall asleep in this chair. I can't figure that out. I sit in bed, can't fall asleep without a fan. I sit here, you know, like this, and I just sort of lean back close my eyes and I can doze off <laughs> well actually sometimes I have this fan going so anyway the power was off until I think at least five o'clock in the morning by which time I had to be awake in an hour's time I had to be awake at six because like I said I was heading over to mum's and I like to be awake at least an hour at least an hour before I have to go anywhere so I've got time to eat and, you know, wake myself up and whatnot. So I just thought, sod it, I'll wake up. So I only had a few hours sleep that night. Um, but while I was over at Mum's, it seems like power went off again at about 12.47, according to UKPN's website. Because I get home, no power. <laughs> um, and actually, uh, between... 1.30 and 5 o'clock in the morning, the power was doing all sorts of weird shit. Um, it tried to come on a few times. I don't know if the engineers were trying to get it to stay on. But I'm guessing it was something, there was a fault that kept tripping it out. Because obviously there's trip switches and things, believe it or not, in the um, substations. We've got one which is about a five minute walk from here, actually. No, ten minute walk from here. Um, the main town substation that distributes power all around town and to around the neighbouring villages. So I don't know if the engineers were in there, you know, trying to get them on, because literally as soon as, split second, the power would come on um, and go off again. Because I'd hear the phones keep going, did it, did it, did it, did it. <laughs> and then it stopped. Um, and then at 5 o'clock in the morning, like I said, power came back on. Um, I get home, I think it's about 3 o'clock that afternoon, power was off. I was home for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Power came back on. Put the computer on. <laughs> power went off later that evening, about 7 to 7.30. Um, but at that time, UK Power Networks were just outside there. Um, probably about 30 yards from the flat actually digging up the hole so I assume when it went out yesterday evening that's because they were fixing the fault they'd obviously located the fault and uh, had to dig the road up to fix it um, but yeah ever since that the barriers in the hole are still there they're not there though um, that probably won't get filled in until Monday at the earliest so tomorrow Sometime during the week I'll get filled in. Um, but I think I was out for about an hour, maybe. Maybe not even that, I don't think. They were pretty quick at uh, fixing that fault. That's not the first time, either. Uh, we did have a line go faulty, literally just out the back here, back of the flat. They had, had to dig all the gravel up to get to it. When they found where the fault was, there was about three holes they had to dig to find it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've actually noticed as well that this flat is not fed, or this, this whole block I mean, is not fed 
by just one line coming in. It's split and from what I can tell it's about two flats on one line. Um, and the only reason I know, know that is because when the power did come on uh, yeah, last night, not last night, the night before, um, five o'clock in the morning actually, the outside lights and the communal lights came on first before any of the flats did, before I got mine. Um, because I went down and had a look in the uh, meter cupboard and all the meters were off. And yesterday afternoon when I looked, some of the flats were on and some were still off. Mine was still off. Um, and then I went down about 15 minutes, 20 minutes later and found that another flat had come on. There was just me and number seven. That was still off. So I'm guessing we are on the same line. <clears throat> So I just thought that was interesting, the way it's um, connected up. I just assumed, you know, we'd have one main line coming in. But nope, we're actually on at least three different ones at this end, so probably three different ones at the other end as well. Because <clears throat> there's 12 in total, there's six flats this end where I am and six flats the other. Uh, annoying, but what can you do? Faults happen and they've got to be fixed. But I don't get it, you know, UK Power Networks, they're pretty quick, you know, to fix faults like that. Um, but yet, yeah, Anglian Water have just taken over three weeks to um, fix a leaky stopcock in the middle of the road, which is just literally just around the corner from here. Um, <laughs> been leaking water down the road for the last three weeks or more. I've only just fixed it. And then they've got the brass neck to put an advert on the radio saying about how green and how energy efficient they're becoming. Really? Take you three weeks to a month to fix a bloody burst water main or a leak. <clears throat> While on the subject of power cuts, it did make me glad that I've got things like this dotting around the flat. I've actually got three of these, two of this style and one which is just a clicky switch. Um, so I've got this one which actually goes up here in the lounge. I've got one in the kitchen and one in the bedroom. I really should put one in the hallway. Um, and I've got a stick up bulb thing, LED bulb in the bathroom used to have one of those in the kitchen, but it decided to go thermal nuclear for some reason. I don't know what happened. I just took it down because it's just in a plastic plate that sticks to the ceiling, which has got a magnet in. And the actual bulb itself has got a magnet in, so you just boop. They're as easy as that. But for some reason, when I took it down, I put new batteries in, put it all together, tested it. It worked, turned it off, put it up there. About 15 minutes later, I heard a thunk thunk in the bloody kitchen where it had fallen off the ceiling. Um, went to pick it up and the base that had the batteries in was red hot. So f somehow those batteries had gone short. Heated up the thing in the ceiling. It actually heated the glue up on the magnets and that's why it had fallen off because the glue had come unstuck. <laughs> So yeah, that one went thermal nuclear for some reason, I have no idea why. And the other one's still in the bathroom. That actually fell off the ceiling because the sticky pad on the plastic mountain plate just come off. Don't know, what, don't know why, because it's still up in the kitchen. There is the option to use a couple of screws, so I'm going to use that in the bathroom when I get around to uh, putting it back up. It did kind of make me wish I'd got my proper emergency lights up. Because <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Not that I really need them, you know, because these, these are actually probably brighter than those uh, emergency lights I've got. Apart from the spot light ones, I mean this will light up the room pretty well. And I've got this one here that I temporarily stuck under the shelf here. Um, I actually bought this a while ago from a charity shop. Didn't realise what it was at first, but... There we go. It's made by Everready. 
I just I actually bought this because I think it was like 199 came with the ever ready batteries as well um because I just like the style of it four little LEDs they're actually um, little yellow the chips not the um, old-fashioned style LEDs but uh I did have this stuck up there with some double-sided carpet tape, but uh, it didn't like that and fell off today. But you can take this bit apart, and I presume the reason for that is there's like three little screw holes. So I'm assuming I can screw this up. There's also a magnet, so I'm assuming there's another piece for... Oh, no. The magnet is for the light, because that's how it's held in. That would just... If I get it on there right, should just lock in like that, yeah. And that just sits in like that with a magnet. There's actually another one on the end, so you could actually um, do that with it as well. <laughs> yeah, I actually quite liked it, so that's why I bought it. But I haven't really decided where I want it. I might put it back up under this shelf. It's actually quite useful up there. I'll just put this base back together and I can't get it apart now. Hang on. I'll muck around with that when I actually uh, put it up. But uh, me being me and liking portable radios and things, also had plenty of these dotted about as well. So I can just grab one and turn it on and listen to some tunes when the power goes off. Seems to be quite a common thing on this road. I don't know why, <laughs> but ever since I've lived here, which has been 13 years now, two or three times a year the power will go off at night. We've had only two major power cuts though. This one that we had yesterday and the other one where they had to come along and dig up the back there. But what they did for that one, because it was just some of the flats off, they sort of connect us, connected us up to um, another main fuse for another flat. Um, so we had temporary power that way. And once they'd uh, fixed the main, they then come around and put us back on our own main fuse. Yeah, for some reason, sometimes when we have the smaller ones, it usually goes off for about half an hour, then it comes back on. I have no idea why. I don't know if it's because something has been tripped in the main substation. Substa it just takes a bit of time for it to reset, because I know they'll automatically reset. Just think, though, if these substations didn't have those trip switches such a fault arises you probably have a fire underground so it's probably just as well that they do have those it's not like we've had any bad weather that could well it's actually under concrete so I can't imagine how bad weather would have affected it I think they dug up under the path just over the way there I've not actually been across to have a look do that later just to be nosy <clears throat> yeah I still got my clock thing to put up on the wall as well I haven't done that yet my um, worldwide clock or world clock whatever you want to call it I got about two months ago <laughs> with the intent to put it up on the wall Bought it from um, Buxton Yard Sales. I was going to put it up on the wall above these windows. So we've got London, uh, Paris, New York and Tokyo. And I've set all the clocks right as well. Unless the hands have been knocked because they are exposed. They're not under any glass or anything. It's all there. There's no numbers on the clocks though, which is a bit annoying.
Oh yeah, more on the subject of clocks. And this doesn't actually surprise me, but I did read a while ago where apparently a lot of kids now don't know how to read an analogue clock, you know, one like this one. Yeah, apparently they don't teach that in school anymore. Which I thought was a bit strange, but then again it doesn't surprise me because nowadays most clocks are digital, aren't they? You know, on your phone, on a PC screen in the corner, it's usually a digital display. Um, so I guess these days they just don't think it's necessary. <laughs> But the silly thing is, you can still buy plenty of analog clocks out there. Now I think about it, I wouldn't mind a digital wall clock like that. I could just hang up on the wall. I don't know why. I just feel like having a digital one. I mean, alarm clocks, they've been digital for donkey's years. I haven't even been able to buy them for years as well as the analogue ones, the old bells on. I actually used to have one of those when I was younger. I used to love it. <sighs> I've got too many bicycles again. <laughs> I think it's 16. I've got three of my own over at Mum's. That one is four. If I count the trike, that's five. And I've got two locked up outside. And seven. And in the shed, I've got one shopper bike. So that would be eight. Two rally mountain bikes, that's ten. Um, my vintage rally, gents bike, that's eleven. Two dual suspension bikes, that's thirteen. Can I think of any more? I'm sure I've thought of more the other day. Oh, my Claude Butler mountain bike, that's fourteen. One mountain bike that I haven't worked on yet, that's 15. It could actually be 15 then. Yeah, probably 15. I thought it was 16, but apparently not. I don't know why I keep buying them, to be honest. I like them. <laughs> That's the only reason I can think of. I just see it, I like it, and I like the price. And I end up buying it. And then I get bored with them and then I end up selling them. <laughs> Did I drink that one? Yeah. Damn it. I have actually thought about selling my two um, little bike trailers now that I've got the trike. So I don't really think I'll need them. Actually, one of the trailers would be handy. Um, in fact, I've got the wheels for one of the trailers up here. I need to give them a bit of a clean. And they were parked up outside, but uh, I overheard two of the neighbours talking about them this morning. I don't know if they were complaining about them or just talking about them or what I couldn't quite hear. But I thought, you know what, just because I don't want to piss anybody off and don't want to risk it, I'll fold the trailers back up and put them in the sheds. That's what I've done, but rusty wheel. 
not even a year sitting outside and they've gone like that. <laughs> Cheap! Don't know how much of the chrome is actually going to come back from this. Where's my uh, work we tool gone? The tires still smell brand new actually, <laughs> even though I bought this last year. That's still got some of the thingy on it, look, from the mould. <laughs> Might need more because I just pulled it off. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to give the wheels a clean up. One, to make them look better, and two, I don't want them to rust through. <laughs> I don't think it would matter, but I just think I could take the centre out of this wheel and... Uh, No, I can't, because it's not even screwed in. Check for a circlip holding that in. I don't even know how you'd get that out. I might not be able to. I don't know if you can get spare wheels for a trailer. I know you can get spare um, hitch parts for it, for if they break. Which uh, is no bad thing. Yeah, I'll give them a clean up tomorrow and uh, I can go back in a shed. I'll probably use some steel wool. I've got several uh, clumps of that up here. Uh, um, I guarantee, as soon as I turn the camera off, I'm going to think of something. I wonder what that was. That's my phone. I've got the volume turned down on the phone. So now it's vibrating every time I get a message or a notification. Go away, stupid thing. No idea what that like. could be a Discord notification actually. Excuse me. Mobile. No, in fact, there's a few more people I think that send my mobile to. Oh, get quite tired now anyway. Yeah. Right. Uh. Oh, yeah, computers. That was it. So um, I did uh, recase my friend's computer for him. Um, I put all his uh, gubbins in that my old white case. Uh, I think he's pretty happy with it. There's a lot more upgrade room in it. See, that was one. There's several reasons why I wanted to do it for him. Upgrade room. So if he needs any more storage space, we've got ample room in there to chuck more hard drives in, or SSDs, or whatever. Um, and there's a lot more airspace in there and I can put better fans in it and quieter fans I actually found some quieter fans up to put uh, in it so um, we can still hear them on his stream but it's nowhere near as bad as it was <laughs> and he's got better air cooling so it should run a lot cooler now um, I did have to do a bit of custom work on it because unfortunately his motherboard didn't have a USB 3 um, front header connector on it. So I couldn't use the USB header that was on the case because that was USB 3. So what I did, I took that one off. And I took the ones off of his case because they are actually in the front panel. In what would have been a 2.5 um, inch floppy bay. So um, I took that off. And I actually had in the cupboard a three and a half to two and a half inch bay adapter, which would allow you not to put a floppy disk or something in a three and a half inch bay. The only problem was the gap was a little bit small for his US front USB panel. So I had to dremel a bit of it out, literally just a little bit of it out, glued it in, that was it. Threw it in the front of the case. Got his USB port problem solved because he needed some on the front. For his controller and there was something else that he plugged in. I can't remember what it was. 
So you needed USBs on the front, so that's how I got over that one. I was actually quite impressed because I did that modification pretty damn tidily. Usually when I try things like that, they look a mess. <laughs> well, I don't like doing things like that. Not for other people, but that actually came out quite nicely. Uh, uh, there's also a couple of my own motherboards I've put in PC cases just to keep them safe more than anything and one of them is going to be a um, like a testing machine anyway especially for hard drives because on the top it's a cooler master case that I got from a friend of mine we traded cases um, but on the top it's got like um, you pull off a dust cover and underneath it it's got a SATA connector data and power for um, a hard drive so you literally just slide a hard drive on the top of the case so if you needed to get some data off another hard drive or you want to test it, format it, whatever, you don't have to mess around taking your side panels off and plugging in extra side cables and whatnot. I can just chuck it in the top. You know, I can just connect that PC up and chuck a hard drive in the top and test it. As long as it's a side hard drive. I can't do it with the IDE drives, obviously. Um, yeah, I just need a cooler for that motherboard because I haven't actually got one <laughs> um, so I can't fire it up yet and make sure it all works everything is connected, I've got all the front panel connected um, CD-ROM drives connected, I've got the fans connected did I put one on the rear? I think I did put one on the rear yeah I did, so yeah everything's connected I just can't do anything with it yet, and I'm not turning it on without a heatsink on it. I don't feel like um, cooking processes. Uh, yeah, I think that was it. Not really done a lot on um, with computers or anything like that. That's been one bugger with this eye because it took so long to recover to the point where I could actually do things. I've not done anything for about a month. So I can't really update you on much. Unfortunately. Um, but now I can do things. Anyway, I'm going to um, end the video here. Because I think I've been talking for nearly an hour, actually, not quite. So, thanks a lot for watching everyone, if you made it this far, of course. I don't blame you if you didn't. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, um, as always, I will leave a link to my Discord server down below, so feel free to join it if you wish. Come along and have a chit-chat on there. I'm on Discord pretty much all day, every day. Um, I've got it on my phone as well, so... It'll probably say I'm online one way or another. <clears throat> um, yeah, oh, don't forget if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a dislike. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.